This is Mrs. O'Neill for part two of the summer packet on scientific notation. So you should go to this main website and it is broken up then into six videos. Uh, I don't use Khan Academy too often, um, but I thought for this uh, and for this purpose, uh, these were really, really good. So we want to make sure that for part one, two, three, and four, again, look at the video, take some notes. You have plenty of room in your packet. Some of you might need to write more notes than others. Some of you are just writing notes as a review, just as a, uh, a constant reminder on how to go back and forth from scientific notation to regular form. Um, and then there was even some examples. Again, you want to write those down. So if you didn't do these yet, what I strongly suggest you do is pause this video and watch these four um, videos and then maybe come back to here. Or again, continuing on part five. Part five is a little trickier. Um, part five is a scientific notation, again, a video on it, uh, but then it needs you to check your work. So make sure you read those directions in your packet because it's kind of weird how they want you to represent the time times 10 and it's another weird way of doing the exponent so make sure that you read those those directions um, you should have had five, seven, I'm sorry, seven questions on that part, part five video, and they all vary. So again, if you haven't watched that part five, make sure to pause this video, make sure to watch those uh, part five of uh, uh, video itself, um, write down the question that you got because everybody's um, question is different and then make sure to write in the answers. On part six, again, it's just a scientific notation review. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So you will be writing down the four problems again that they give you and answering those questions. So what I strongly suggest again is to pause the video, play that video six, because I do have the answers then in this video. So you want to check your work. You want to make sure that you're understanding how to do scientific notation and standard form and be able to go back and forth. So at this point, you should have paused um, the video. You should have paused the that. Yeah, you should have paused all the this video actually. Um, wrote down those questions uh, and wrote down your answer. So now, again, you're coming back to this video and you're checking your answers to make sure uh, that, that it makes sense. Now, if it doesn't and you're struggling and you don't know how to do these, at least wrote down what you, what you wrote. Um, you can either cross off or erase, it's up to you, uh, but you wanna put like a big question mark or you might wanna say, hey, you know what? I'm really not understanding this. So when we get to this or these questions in class, uh, when we get to this chapter, um, you know, this will be a great time to come maybe back to these videos uh, to review. So these are your questions one through four and again if you haven't done so already you want to write down the question if it's not written there for you. Uh, I believe everybody gets the same uh, for this one but then have your answers. So I'm going to click away to show you the answer but again I wanted to make sure that you wrote down the questions, you, you watch that video, you have some kind of answer. So your first answer in scientific notation is this 2.456 times 10 to the 11th. If you did not get that, either cross it off and write down the new so you know that there's something wrong, or maybe you have a negative 11 instead of a positive 11 uh, as the exponent, so you might want to go back and refresh your memory, re-watch some of those videos on how that, that exponent is positive versus negative, because in number two, it's a negative four. So if you did get your exponent's correct number but different sign, you know, your positive instead of a negative and vice versa, then please go back and watch that part of the video because you're not understanding what's going on. The answer to number three is this and four is this. So again, if you did not get the answers correct, so pause, you know, check your answers. If you did not get the answers correct, you might want to circle or um, I also have an email address on the front of the packet, the very, very first page. You are more than welcome to email me and say, I'm still not understanding positive, negative. I'm not understanding which way to move the decimal, uh, whatever, whatever you need to do in order to make sure you're understanding this information. 
So then I'm asking you specific questions. So hopefully you watched those videos, you did some of the questions and the answers. Whether you got them right or wrong, at this point you should go back and make sure that you can do these because I'm going to ask you to answer as many of those questions as you can. So pause this video, answer these questions as many as you can. And again, they're step by step. I know some things are redundant and some things are like, oh, I know how to do this without showing you. I get that, but I really truly want to make sure that you're understanding. So if you understand the simple stuff and you can explain how to do the simple stuff, then when we get to the more challenging stuff, it's going to make sense while we're doing things the way we do. So pause, answer as much as you can, come back and continue playing this video so that again, you can check your work. Now, there might be, you know, maybe you can answer one, two, and three, and now for whatever reason, you're stuck on four. Well, then play up to four. Play this video, get your answers from one through four, and then pause and see if you can continue answer like five and six. Again, if you get stuck on six or seven, you might want to play up to that point and then pause. So it's up to you. It is kind of, this. these videos are going to be more on the interactive. Do this and pause. Do this and pause. So for number one, um, to change which way are we going to move the decimal. If I'm asking you which way, I'm just asking you for left or right. You should have had right. Because of this positive exponent, and there's the Y, I'm already giving you the answer. Because the exponent is positive, we're going to move that decimal to the right. Number two, so change it now to standard form. So now you're going to take that decimal and you're going to move it six times to the right so that should be your answer there again if this is confusing you're going back to those other videos or you're putting a big question mark and maybe emailing me so how do we change this again which way are we going to move the decimal again we're moving it to the left because it's a negative exponent or the exponent is negative again i'm not too worried about the wording if you have something along those lines you're good don't worry about erasing uh, because your phrase is different than mine so now change it to standard form and you should get that. Double check your zeros here. And I do like writing it 0. 0.00000. So there are five zeros to one seven. And I do like to have zero points so that you know, or I know, or whoever's reading your information, your paper knows that there's a decimal place there. If you just have point zero zero, if that decimal point is a little too faint, you might not be able to see it. And then we just think you have a bunch of zeros in front of two one seven for no reason. So make sure it's a 0, 0.0. So now you're going to show me, you're going to use an arrow and you're going to show me where would the decimal point go when we're changing this number to scientific notation. Because I don't know about you, but I don't see a decimal point. So we're going to have to put a decimal point somewhere. Where is that going to go? You should show an arrow an arrow in that way. So 2.1700 is going to be the number. Now, why does the number go here? Or the, I'm sorry, why does the decimal go here? Because this number before the decimal can only be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. All right, so if we have a 10, then that there's something wrong. There's only can be one digit, 1 through 9, and then a decimal point. So it says when changing this number to scientific notation, is that exponent going to be positive or negative? Hopefully you know that it's positive. And again, what's the Y? Well, this number is rather large. So because this number is the large number, uh, we're going to have that positive exponent. So now change it to scientific notation. And I'm actually going to show you with arrows. So there's no decimal place. The decimal place is going to be here. It starts here, and I'm going to move it one, two, three, four times. So the number is going to be 2.17. And it's up to you if you want to put those added zeros. It's not necessary. Times 10 to the fourth power. Number eight, now we're going the other way. Now we have a really, really small number. So again, where our decimal point is starting here, notice I put 0, 0.0, our decimal place starts here, and where are we gonna put the, the decimal point? Before the two, after the two, uh, after the one, or after the seven? Hopefully you figured that out. It's going to be after the 2. Again, our number has to be between 1 and 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, dot, or decimal, and any other numbers that go after it. 
So when changing it, is the exponent going to be positive or negative? Hopefully you knew that it was negative. And the y, because we're starting with a smaller number than 1 or with, okay? So, and you have to be specific there, right? Is the number bigger than 1 or is it smaller than 1? You really should be specific there um, knowing that it's greater or less than 1. So number 10, you're going to change it to scientific notation. Again, I'm going to use my little arrows. I'm going to move that decimal one, two, three, and four times. So the actual answer is 2.17 times 10 to the negative four. And again, make sure that you can see that negative. When people are, again, reading or um, grading your papers, you want to make sure that it's a negative. So pause the video. Here are some practice problems, uh, giving you the number in scientific notation, and you are to move it, or I should say, transform it into standard form. It's up to you if you want to keep your units there or not, but I just want to make sure you're understanding that even though we're, we're talking about the number and dealing with the number, all numbers in science class are really a measurement. Um, so letter A is really milliliters. Letter B, we'll talk about this year, is molarity. Uh, letter C is meters per second, and D is centimeters. Just to give you an idea that in science, you always need a value, that's the number, and a unit. So pause the video, make sure you have some answers down, and then play to hear the answers. So there's your A, lots of zeros and commas, B, C, and D. So again, if you're not understanding which way that the, the decimal goes, and if you're getting a big number or a small number, please review some of those videos. So again, you're going to now take the normal number, meters, grams, moles, and liters. Um, I actually wrote it out this time instead of just giving you the symbols. Um, taking those numbers now and write it into um, scientific notation. Oh, I, I forgot I didn't switch these I'm sorry um, so I'm not gonna remake the video so I think you can figure that out these are standard form numbers and now you're writing in scientific notation uh, hopefully it's correct on your um, on your packet uh, so that's a positive exponent a negative exponent a negative exponent and a positive exponent again hopefully you're understanding where to put that decimal write these numbers before the decimal has to be between uh, 1 and 10 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 or 9 the decimal point and those other numbers and you do not have to include all those extra zeros but hopefully you're understanding um, getting that positive um, exponent or negative exponent and why Okay, so you have one more section to do in the um, summer packet.